everybody. Welcome to Yep. <laughs> Welcome back. You've been missing. I have been missing. Funny story. Mm. You've got a banana. No, funny story oh. is that I actually, I went to the dentist. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? Why are you painting your it's teeth? Everywhere. I went to the dentist. And the dentist said that I have three cavities. I need three fillings, and I get need to get my wisdom to surgically removed, which is going to cost me five thousand dollars. So that was fun. What are you doing? That's annoying. It's a bit ASMR. No, it's not good. Anyway, you're annoying. Cool. That's fun for you. Yeah, no, it was very fun. I'm really upset. I don't know what to do now <sighs> with my life. Ah, Jenny. That's not a funny, funny story. Oh, okay. I have a better funny story. My funny story is that I was about to walk out of the office at 8 p.m., right? I had just had a meeting with someone. And I was about to walk out of the office and Alistair comes to pick me up. Alistair comes in, looks at San. San's like, hey, what's up? And San says, you want to check out my city? And Alistair's like, yeah, I'll check out your city. And then I have to spend the next 20 minutes watching Stan show Alistair the city he made on what? What's it called? City, Safer Cities. <laughs> city Skylines 2? City Skylines 2. So hang on. I thought you were just telling us a funny story. That was funny. I watched you for like 15 minutes straight. What are you doing? Why are you wasting time? What is this? I'm not wasting time. I'm just. We're still doing yeah. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, have you got a funny story or not? Was that not funny? I thought it was just cool. Oh. It was a cool story. You've got a very big city. I'll tell you that much. I'm so proud of you <coughs> for making such a big city. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. That one. That one's me. <laughs> Huge. Do you have a funny story? Um, no, I don't. No, not at all. Nah, my life's pretty boring. Mm. Yeah, I just you know made exist. Made a bigger city. Yeah, slightly made bigger a bigger city. city. Go to work all day, cry. Oh, you're crying? No, fuck no. That was a joke. That was my funny bit. <laughs> okay, it's not. Let's keep going. All right. All right. Where are we starting on the newsletter? I mean, you tell me how you've been doing it. Yeah, I started the newsletter. You started the newsletter. Fuck, All this right. content creator sucks. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, the content creator. It's an interesting article that we did a case study on, which is is Meta limiting political content, which comes out tomorrow. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you? Doing? It's quite interesting. Why are you having breakfast now? I'm trying to get our views up. Oh my god. Can okay. they even see you? Wait, Stan. You know we have. Seven weekly viewers. Yeah, I know. That's one it's, viewer a day. It's Big City. It's Abdel. Now nah, Abdel watches it uh, as the user, <laughs> so it doesn't count. Okay, so it's not. It's Abdel. It's, uh, it's it's Big City. Who's Big City? Oh, how does what she is, not know Big City? Who's Big City? Big City Smasher. Oh. <sighs> so fuck. Okay, so do what you got to do, mate. Yep. Is meta limiting political content? I find this uh, this conversation very interesting. Interesting. I thought you were going to find it annoying, actually. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, I no, thought I we were going to just glaze through this because I thought you just wouldn't want to talk No, I it. find it annoying because the fact that people think their freedoms are getting taken away from them. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? That is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like people's freedoms. You better take fucking a f- eat that banana. Just from you social better media. Eat it, the whole that's thing. That's so insane. The entire thing, or I'm gonna dock your pay for one whole banana. They're like eighty-seven cents at the moment. I will buy. I can buy you another banana, uh, Stanley. If that's what you want. No, I just want you to eat the whole thing. I, what in one go or like I just mean, finish consume it? it. I, no, I will consume this obviously okay, because good. the second part of this <laughs> is a mukbang. So, anyway. If this gets any views whatsoever, holy shit. I'm doing something right. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's interesting that people feel like their freedom's being taken away. 
isn't it? It's like people, it's, you know, last year. Yeah. Every day before this happened, people hated political content on their thing. They always got angry at it. Yeah. I fucking hope you slip. I really hope you slip. What? What are you talking about? This is so dumb. You got a sharp knife cutting on your lap. You're going to slip. And you hope that I hurt myself? Yeah, I do. That's crazy. I do. We are going to get banned for dangerous activities. No, we're not. Now I've cut you up some. Oh, we've already banned. No, we're not. Stop being silly. Holy shit. (sighs) Keep going. I think it's interesting that you didn't get a choice, though. No, I don't. Oh. Why should you? I don't know. It's not like you own Facebook. It's not that I'm mad about it. I just thought it was interesting. Nah. I think it's great. I think what it is. So in 2016, everyone got angry at Facebook for manipulating the election. Did they? Well, they their system allowed analytic Cambridge Analytica to allow them to use the analytics to win the election. And then in this year, they're like, you know what? We're not going to make that possible. What? We're not going to be the cause for this election. We're going to make it so that everyone's on an pl- even playing field and you can't do it. That was nice of them. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what it is. I just don't know if this is... Um, I think this is overblown by people. I think people Especially are, because it's so easy to undo it. <laughs> like, like just, it's just like... Just go, go into the settings. Go into the settings and click it. And also that like... People were going, I want to see political content. And I guarantee you <gasps> that you will be fired by the end of this episode. Why? I still ate it. Oh. Um, I guarantee you that people start complaining about political content by the end of this year because of the 2024 elections. Yeah, of course. I'm annoyed that, I, of course, it was Sophie who wrote this. <laughs> Don't say of that. Of course, it was Sophie who Don't wrote say this. That. Sophie the Conspiracist. Sophie, go get your tinfoil hat and fuck write a different, different article. Are you going to help in this podcast at all or are you just going to cut well, fucking free? Honestly, I, I don't have any thoughts. I feel like the gag's over. No, honestly, I don't have any thoughts on this thing because I'm not – it's not something that I – it's not that I don't care about it. I just – That's your thought. I'm on – oh, is that my thought? But I, that, that's not an interesting thought. Well, it is because it's different to fucking Sophie Rose. Interesting. Who thinks the world's falling yeah, apart. Yeah, I don't really, I don't care that much for it. If this gets any, this is the boringest podcast. Can you stop and be part of this podcast? Are you being serious? Yeah, I'm being serious. What are you doing? I'm trying to get more views. Surely the fucking gag's over. Oh, it's not. It's got to be because this is not funny. Why? Because it's over. How are we still doing this gag? It's so boring. It's just the fact that I'm trying. It's not supposed to be funny. But you got still got to do the podcast. I'm still doing the podcast. How? You aren't participating. All we're doing is having a fight live on camera. <laughs> okay. I promise to participate. Well, then, okay, what's next? Elon Musk. And what are we talking about, Elon Musk? Elon Musk's robo taxi. What about it? What's your opinion on it? I honestly, I, it's not something that intrigues me at all. But people are saying neither does any of the fucking creators that we've had so far that these kids have. I mean, on. okay, Ray William Johnson though, he's like the original. Co- that doesn't mean he's good. It just means he was early. Oh, I was just gonna say he's kind of like um, America's funniest home videos mash with like. Kabi Lame, if Kabi Lame did dialogue. I don't know how I see it. No, he's a news reporter. He he talks about the news of social media. That's what he goes viral for. Yeah, but I also like find it interesting that like, like he's got endless content because of other pieces of content. Oh yeah, I guess that just makes him a news reporter. But he does it funny, right? I mean, most of the stuff that I've watched of him is like. In a funny, humorous tone. Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched anything that's funny. I just watched him reporting on stuff. I actually, back in the day, I only really watched him because he was dating um, 
Anna Akana. Do you know Anna Akana? No. She also does skit work. And then they would just be like this really humorous duo. Um, and then they split and then I start watching really interesting. <laughs> I don't watch them. I find it boring. I don't find it very entertaining. No. I like Anna Akana stuff though. He, every once in a while, he's a good source though if you're trying to find out something. Yeah. But otherwise, I don't know. I don't get his recent stuff. It kind of sounds fake. Like, not real stories. They kind of sound like, it sounds like book talk. You know, like when they explain um, like a really crazy story yeah. of some sort. He's just in it for viral then, viewership, which is obviously making him bank. Yeah. Well, he like made, not made, he was what, bought out or introduced to like a kind of like a media production company when his YouTube started going off. And so now like he has full production and money to do that kind of stuff. So that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You're not interested in him at all. No. But it's I mean, there I'm is not. a lesson of like, if you start early, then it's this. It's a similar lesson that we kind of find with a lot of the OG creators. It's like if you start early and you just hone in and you. I don't think it has any relatability for other marketers. Yeah, that is what I kind of found hard. I did try to ask Gemini this morning, like what. I just think like picking these sorts of creators that have a star like if you're just trying to make a media company fine get it yeah but if you're like selling skincare yeah what are you gonna do how are you gonna emulate this guy he's there's no business part to it that makes it any worthwhile thinking about other Except than being, a media, company. being a media company but is that not something that people want to do like for example the job um app thing that we were looking at right nah, no different is that, why is that different because you making a media company that's still relatable to your business is different, but he's just in crime stories or news story or, you know, like it's just, it would be different if that was some form of a, um, he was having these people on and he's becoming a center of attention for us. What do you mean on? Like, like if he had people that he was interviewing because of it and they're all centered around a central topic, but right. we would never create a podcast with or, or even a show for a client that is purely um, random stories about random things, yeah. it wouldn't line up to a strategy. Yeah, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, but none of those things are really related. Because it's news. It's just viral stuff or things news that he... In general. Actually, some of it's not even viral. He made it viral. He'll tell a story about something that wasn't that big of a deal, but then he's made it go viral because of his Like audience. that TikTok one that the TikTok repurposed on YouTube, the link. Oh, no, Very know. book talk. I, was like, I don't even know what this is. So it's just irrelevant. Like it's different. It's not the same as like very few of our clients will ever have a media company or people marketers. They're not going to do media company the way we are going to do a media company. No. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Our dating void will have some, we're a marketing agency who makes content and so the dating void does two things for us. At so one, it'll produce its own revenue in the future, which is fine. That's media company, mm. right? And the other thing for us is that it just showcases our ability to make content. And but if you're an accountant, you're not gonna you're gonna make content about. It's such a limited thing to for people to build an actual media. There's a difference between turning it turning your business into a media company uh -huh. and then making a media company. Because a media company is purely for the entertainment of the content. Right. But a company who, makes a, who thinks of themselves as a media company but makes media that's related to their audiences mm. is so different to right. someone who just makes a fucking dating show. Yeah, then no, I get that now. That's different. That's okay. an a We're trying to make an actual media company that gets yeah. paid for the media. Right. Okay. But what is so different to like Cassie Ho? It's because she went and made product and... So Cassie Ho's stuff is so different to this. Yeah. To him. Yeah. I mean, it's not even in the same. Well, like, because like in terms of like the OG creators and then like how you move into like. Yeah, but she moved into business, right? Right. Yeah. I feel like you're fucking with me right now that you're trying to. I feel like you're fucking with me. <laughs> what do you mean? There is no way that you don't understand this. I do. <laughs> I do. Now, 
There's no way that you don't understand Cassie who is different to this guy. Anyway, why are we talking about this guy? Well, I kind of wanted to go back to like OG creators and the that kind of thought. Like, yeah, there's obviously a hard difference, but there must be some similarities in what they did and what he did. But how is that helpful least. for anyone listening? Because they can't go back in time and become the OG creator. But wouldn't, is that just not part of the reps? Like, they wouldn't have known that they were becoming an OG creator. Yeah, I know, but then that's a different conversation, being an OG creator and being someone who's been in it long. They're two different things. There's time and then there's OG. Yeah. I can be in it. I've been in it for four years. It's been time. But I'm not OG. But what, did those people know that they were going to be OG? Do you know what I'm saying? Like in 20 no, years time. No, they didn't, but they were at the beginning. When when So 14 years ago on YouTube is when it really started to pop. Before that, you, I mean, you couldn't even get monetized, really. Monetization wasn't since the beginning in 2001 mm. or whatever it was. Yeah. YouTube wasn't monetized. So being OG at the beginning of the monetization of YouTube is being OG because you're first. It's like how you were with TikTok or actually people even before you, you probably weren't even really OG, but something like Win Wolf mm. musically or even Carvey Lane. He's right from the beginning. But you wouldn't like... But you, right now you can't be like, you can't start TikTok now and be like, oh, I'm OG. No, you're not. You're like five years late. You can still be big and do time, but that's a different but thing. But the perception of some people will think that it is because if you do the time. It doesn't matter what perception means. It's There's the perception and what's reality. That's two different things. Mm. All right. Interesting. No, but you're trying, to, you're trying to combine length of time in the business and OG those, and make those the same thing. No, I'm just saying that I think some people later down the track, they could view like the attention seeker as like an OG TikTok creator thingy my thing. But we're not. But I'm just saying if yes, we they keep could. going, they could. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. They could, but that's not the reason. So we're trying to tell other brands. The whole point of the podcast is to tell other brands, what could you do? They can't be OGs unless something starts. Like, for instance, they could be OG on Blue Sky. What's Blue Sky? It's the it literally just a fucking um, Jack Dorsey just remade Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's exactly Twitter. There's nothing different about it except that yeah. you can have different servers. Yeah. So you could be OG now on that. Right now it's brand new. So you could start on it, be one of the first, build up a big profile mm. in 20 years, you know. It was the same as on like Twitter. There was some of the OGs, like I think um, Ryan Reynolds. I'm pretty sure Ryan Reynolds is one of the OGs on – no, 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 Ashton Kutcher. Sorry, Ashton Kutcher. He was like the first to a million on Twitter. That's cool. Yeah. So there's things like that you can be. But you, there's a difference between being OG and being on their f on platform pages. Like, Mr. Beast was not OG, mm. but he's been there for ages. And I think that's what I'm saying is that it does <laughs> – not that you're trying to be an OG or, like, whatever it is, that you can, like, create this idea around kind of, like, I guess, heritage or you just being there for a long time yep. if you just start now. It's the whole concept where we're talking about what happens in 10 years' time. What are we in 10 years' time? Like, if we keep putting in the reps, then what that looks like for us. Yeah, like, agreed. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, I'm just saying words are important because if you're trying to teach someone go be an OG, it's different to being someone putting the reps. Yeah, I think that's just what I was, I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's important for people to know because it's not the same. Because if you're like, oh, I need to be OG, then people are be like, well, I can't. Right? And then what do they do? Nothing. Mm. So then those are two different conversations that has to be clear because what we're trying to say to people is, like, how do you replicate and do things and lessons from these guys? The only real lessons you'll get from that guy, what's his name? Ray William Johnson. The only, reason, the only lesson you'll get from that is like what can go viral and is it worth it? The only good thing about him going viral, the only thing I would ever take from that is that he uses his face. For like personal brand purposes because he's using other content to make him viral. So therefore, like, yeah, like Kabi a little bit. But. Yeah, but Kabi's a creator. Yeah. 
but as a creator, there's a difference between being a creator and being a business and use mm. all marketers, right? Like it is mo- unrealistic for most marketers to try to become creators. Right. That's not a normal, that's not yeah, normal. No, no, no. Most no. people can't do it. Most people won't do it. Yeah. So it's no, it's no use teaching people as marketers to, oh, just be a copy lame. Like just be Ray William Johnson, whatever his name is, you know, like it's not good. The thing that the only lesson I would take out of his and what he's done real well is he's always used his face to tell the story. He's mm. never used anyone else. Mm. He's been the guy that people come to. And because he's done it for so long, everyone knows him. I trust. Yeah. Or knows his face at least. Like I don't know his name. Yeah. I mean, I probably remember it now, but I know his face. And I've watched his TikToks and YouTube before because he talked about a topic I wanted to know more about, which so is fine. And he could use that to then go off and do other things. Like he could make other businesses from it. Fine. Because people know him. But if I'm a marketer trying to emulate that, okay, so this is my this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go spend 15 years getting everyone in the world to see my face, and then I'm going to go to my boss and be like, okay, I'm ready. I mean, it's just unrealistic. Mm-hmm. There's no lessons in it for a marketing team or even small business owners who are trying to do it, mm-hmm. except for put your face first. It's the only lesson, really. What else is there? What would you do? What would you take from him? I mean, I'm just thinking of the reps thing and then that face recognition, but that's a really, that makes sense. I get it. I get it. I know what you're saying. Um, I just lost him. Um, the other thing I was wondering is on that thing, why did he tag it as Melbourne? Who? Is he in Where? Melbourne or is she from Melbourne? Who? Is that what it was? In this video that he did, that one that was linked? Because he's definitely not from Melbourne. No, he's not. I wonder if the person he's talking about is from Melbourne. I haven't actually watched the clip. but Well, I didn't even think it was real, especially with the the graphics. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought it was, it was a book or something. Is it the story of the girl um, who... Is it the story of the girl? Who's watched this? Is it the story of the girl pretending she had cancer and got people to pay her? Uh, But it is. Is it based off that girl from Australia who pretended she had cancer? Okay, got it. That's why it's in Melbourne. Interesting. He tagged the place she's from. I don't know. Anyway, um, maybe to get that audience. Maybe. Because they understand and they know, like, no one else cares. Like, I didn't care about it, but maybe in Australia. But location tags, is that what it does? Does it does that I make it know. your localized audience? I'm not sure. I might push it to Interesting people, thing to think possibly. about. We should, think, we should try it. It's not available to everyone. It was available to us, right? Is it? Well, it's definitely available to me. It's, like, depending on the phone and every, like, it's, remember, it's kind of, like when we were trying to post reels not to feed um, it depended on your device and your what you had just done and all of this random stuff it's definitely on my personal one but i'll see if i can do it on here um that's an interesting thing but it's not available to it doesn't everyone. matter it's also to wait also um is this a you uh just a me thing but tiktok removed tagging people um, it's now a mention. Yeah, but it's it's just not. I don't know. It's now you down. You've got. You have to put them in the caption. You can't just tag them, which is weird. I don't know. It is weird. Oh my. Especially because I tagging is such a. It's a long. It's been a long time of like behavioral habits. I guess. Yeah. It's now just in the, in the caption only. That's yeah. so weird. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess there was no place for really tagging that's someone. That's so bad. <laughs> um, I mean, if they have questions, feel free to fire away. This is how there can't be questions in there except for what the fuck is wrong with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I want to go back to New Zealand. 
because I actually care about the newsletter. Right. And it's actually what this podcast is about, not the podcast itself. So the podcast is about growing the newsletter, not about fucking eating apple during the podcast. So the thing with RoboTaxi, yeah. the thing I don't understand is why it's in here. In the newsletter mm. itself? Is it dramatic? Is that what you're saying? Like, is it a cultural thing? Is it actually Is it cultural? I'm not sure. It's finance. Does that not count a little bit? Kind of not at this the morning stage. brew vibe. Of course, if he did something that was, um, of course, if he did something that was so dramatic that it made waves in the marketing world, but it's just yeah. Elon Musk saying something's going to happen. We're it's close to it. He's done it forever. Yeah. It's not new. Um, but yeah, anyway. The Billy Eilish thing, though, is interesting. Eight million new followers. Oh, well, depending on what source you're coming from, it's eight million or five million. It just depends on what your source is. But crazy. Well, it's eight million new followers. That which is crazy. Yeah, I guess crazy, but she's already got so many. But the fact that she put everyone on her close friends, is that what's happened? Yep. But what? That's the thing I don't understand. Like how or why? Both. Because once everyone's on her close friends and no one's on her close friends. Exactly. No, it just was so that at the time before you had realized that you were part of everyone, there was this feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm on her close friends. She's picked me. And then once word spread and it was everyone was side by side trying to check, it's like, oh, everyone's added. But for that moment in time when you're alone and you don't have anyone to really talk to, then it feels, I guess, I don't know, amazing, Mm -hmm. crazy, cool. No, I get that. I get that. Do you not think there's backlash on that though? Oh, no. Do you not think like once you've done it and you're like, well, okay, I'm not that special? Because it's like once you why why would you try to get on the close friends if you know everyone's on the close friends like up uh, post once everyone knows what happens then? I don't think she'd lose followers, but no. also she doesn't need to go by eight million followers. Like it's not a big deal for her. Yeah. When you're at one hundred and twenty, yeah, going by eight is just time. You know what I mean? She will get there. She'll get there just by continually putting. But is it like a there. piece to the puzzle that we just haven't seen the rest of? That's what I'm asking. I I don't know, I guess. I mean, people are thinking that it is part of a thing that she's doing. But do we know without, you know? My point is, is if everyone's on close friends, then the thing that she's doing could have just been on a normal one. It could just have been like chatter. It, is she going to cut people from it? What if it's just for chatter? Just talk, to talk about, about her again. No, no, I get that. I get that. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, okay, that's fine for chatter. What I'm trying to say is, like, what happens after? Like, how does that, what's the long-term strategy play? Just purely for chatter. The thing is, is, like, it's different when you're us and then when you're Billy Eilish. Is it just that it's a cool thing that no one's done before ever? Even if everyone is on it, is it just... Yeah, it can be. It can be. I'm not saying it can't be. I'm not saying that it can't be that. What I'm just trying to say is, what is the real strategy here and is it necessary? Or is it other things? Maybe she'll use it to release all her albums. It doesn't change anything though because everyone's on it. You could have just done it to everyone. If you're on close friends or not close friends, if everyone's on close friends and everyone's also like if everyone on her followers is now close friends, then it doesn't change anything. Yeah. But it's only her fault. Like it's only her followers though, so it's word of mouth, and because you're not going to be, you're not going to know unless you're on her close friends, right? Yeah, yeah. I know it doesn't open up to a public, and that people have to be following her to be on that thing. Mm-hmm. But when 120 million people follow you and they're all on it. It's not like those 120 million people are like, oh, don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> the moment it goes, it goes on the news. Yeah. It's not like she's. it, it makes you quiet and keeps you quiet. Anyway, we've got to go.
Say bye. Bye.